Hey there YouTube, it's time for another video on modifying my X-Arcade tank stick. So, if you've been following my videos, you know I've done some serious modifications to this thing so far. Um, none of them too difficult. Uh, so we started out, this had black buttons, and I replaced the ones like this one that came with it with HAP color buttons. Uh, which makes it a little easier when you're playing games to uh, remember what you assigned to what button. Um, then the next thing I did is I replaced the factory joysticks, the ones that come with it, with IL Euro Sticks, Industrious Lorenzo Euro Sticks. And then I wasn't thrilled with how they perform on uh, four way games. So it's an eight-way only joystick, which means that um, when you hit the corners, you're hitting two switches at once. And games like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, things like that, which were designed for four-way play, uh, really don't like that. And uh, you definitely notice it in your performance in gameplay. So as well as much as those are really nice joysticks, they're really nice joysticks if you only need eight-way play, in my opinion. Um, so what did I do next? Next I installed this guy, which is a Japanese style stick. It's a zippy stick, a little bit cheaper model, but pretty much a ripoff of a um, Shimitsu joystick or a Sanwa. Um, and I really like it. Um, and uh, you still have the same issue though, You can, uh, except for it can either be four-way or eight-way or two-way. Um, but the only way to change it is to get inside the cabinet and unscrew a restrictor plate off the bottom of the joystick that changes it from two-way to four-way to eight-way, which takes a bit because you gotta take your case apart, then you gotta unscrew the plate and put the new, you know, put the plate in the right position for the gameplay you want. Not something you really want to do every time you want to change from one game to the other. So. Um, that didn't work out. And then the other idea was this guy. So these restrictor plates are for the top. And what they do is that right now it's in eight way. And you can use this little switch here, which pulls it and makes it into four way. Which is a pretty cool idea, all from the top of the cabinet. Um, I'm just not thrilled with the quality of it. It's it's a plastic plate. It kind of pops when you push down on it. Um, the plastic isn't very um, hard. If you looked at the picture, um, I bought it on Amazon from um, a seller called Ham uh, Holland Computers. If you look at the picture, the holes look like they're silver, um, which would certainly make you feel like it's probably a metal plate. I'm guessing at one point they were metal plates. Uh, but they now make them out of plastic, and you can tell uh, it also kind of bows up, as you can kind of see here. It's not a, a flush thing here. Um, so I'm not really thrilled with the build quality of it, and I, I really don't love the look either. It kind of, I don't know, the, the big huge circle mounted to the top kind of looks crappy in my opinion. That looks clean. That looks crappy. Um, so, um, next option would be to get... Um, one of a couple different products. Uh, Industrious Lorenzo makes a mag stick, um, which basically, if you look at the normal Industrious Lorenzo joystick, it adds a switch on the side here that allows you to switch it from four-way to eight-way play. But you still got to get inside the cabinet to take that lever or switch and switch it. Um, so that's um, better than a restrictor plate that you got to screw on, but still not um, altogether convenient. So, factory stock joysticks, uh, definitely not the same quality as the Industrious Lorenzo sticks, which are much nicer in my opinion. Um, and then uh, the Zippy sticks, which I really like, but you still have to get inside the cabinet to change them from four way to eight way. Um, and then the restrictor plates. Now, uh, I also made a video on adding this guy, which is a spinner, 
um, which is really awesome for games like Arkanoid um, and um, other games like Marvel Madness and uh, Major Havoc, etc. Um, and that's really nice as well. So you can watch any of my other videos on how to change the buttons, uh, on how to change the joysticks to either an IL Euro stick or a zippy stick, or how to add one of these little plates. Um, in the end, though, um, I decided to get a hold of a company called Ultramark. Um, this is their website. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Um, but I got a hold of them because and I've been making these videos and I've spent a lot of money on this thing um, between um, all these different various mods and the price of the um, X Arcade itself. Um, so I asked them if maybe they would provide me with um, one of their MagStick Plus joysticks, a couple of them, to, uh, to do a video review of it. Now, they didn't want to give me free ones, but what they did do for me, um, which made it manageable, is they, they sold them to me at buy one, get one, which is a pretty good deal. Um, they're not cheap. Uh, that would be my first complaint with them is that they're very expensive. Uh, compared to most joysticks, so um, what's very expensive? Well, um, I don't know how much the factory ones cost. Um, they do sell them online uh, replacements from X Arcade, but I would never buy them. Um, I know that um, the Euro sticks were about fifteen dollars each, I believe, and the Zippy sticks were like eight something each. So that's pretty cheap, right? Um, of course, you add shipping and things like that, and it comes up to a little bit more. But overall, you know, $10, $12 each with shipping, you know, $15, $20 each with shipping. Um, the Ultramark products are over twice that. So you're looking for, um, if you're looking for a mag stick, a uh, regular mag stick, uh, according to their website, it's $25, and that's one that just has the switch, kind of like the magnetic stick from uh, Industrious Lorenzo. Or if you go with the MagStick Plus, which lets you switch it from the top, basically you pull the joystick up, rotate it, and that does the switch for you, and then let it down. Uh, those ones are a hefty $37 a piece, plus shipping, uh, and it's probably international shipping because it's in the UK, so unless you happen to live in the UK, uh, you're looking at international shipping. So it gets a little bit pricey real quick, especially if you need a couple of them. Um, so uh, I was really appreciative that they were willing to help me out and do a buy one, get one. Uh, it still wasn't cheap. It's still for the... Um, I wanted the joysticks, and I wanted the option to have a ball top instead of a bat top. Um, so you can see here they sell... Um, they sell the bat top handles, I'm sorry, the ball top handles, which replace the bat top. Um, but that's another $14 a piece. So now your joystick costs you $37 for the joystick, plus another $14 to make it a ball, and they do not sell the option of just getting the ball. You either, you, you would have to buy it with the bat top, uh, for $37 and then add on a $14 ball top. So now you're at over $50 plus um, international shipping. So um, for the one bat top uh, MagStip Plus plus the add-on $14 ball top, I was at just under 68 bucks with shipping. So that's a lot of money um, for one uh, joystick complete. Um, now, they gave me two for that price, which is uh, makes it a little more reasonable, but it's still not cheap. Even the one is still more expensive than any of the other joysticks I purchased, um, and would be even more expensive than the world's most popular joysticks, which would be the Sanwa and the Shimitsus, which run for about 25 bucks a piece, um, but still have the issue of not being able to switch from the top of the cabinet. So... You do have to pay a premium if you want to have the luxury of having the ability from the top of the cabinet to change your joystick. Um, uh, these guys here, the restrictor plates, I, I, I believe were like 14 something each. 
um, plus shipping. So, you know, you're looking at about $16, $17 each um, added to whatever the cost of your joystick was. Um, and they work, uh, but I, I'm not thrilled with how they look, and I don't really love the way they feel uh, either when you play. So, uh, I wouldn't recommend these guys, honestly, to be quite frank. So, what did I order? What did, what did I get? So, they have a couple options, like I said. You have the regular mag stick, which lets you do the switch on the side. Um, these guys here. Uh, and then you have the Magstick Plus, which allows you to do it from the top. So I wasn't interested in these at all, which is why I didn't want the Industrious Lorenzo version either. Um, so uh, that brought me to this one. Uh, there's also another option they call, uh, I believe it's called the Servo Stick, this guy here. Yep. And this is a really cool idea. Basically, it has this big motorized mechanism on the side that will switch it, you know, electronically from four-way to eight-way by spinning a plate on the bottom, which is a really cool idea. Um, and if you're using a Windows machine, they have software that does it for you, which is also a pretty cool idea. Um, but I'm not. I'm using a Raspberry Pi, and I don't believe they have software to do that for that. And if they do, I, I don't know that I really want to get into it. Um... So this requires, these are pricey as well though, so the servo stick, you can either get with a bat top or a ball top, they do offer the option at the time you order it, um, and either way it's going to be $39, but you're not done there, you also need a control board, and you need one of those for every two joysticks, so, um, so in addition to the $39 joystick, you also have to buy a $29 control panel for at least one of the two, okay? Um, plus, you end up with an extra USB cable coming out of your um, box that has to be plugged into, you know, your 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 Windows computer, or you know, if you're able to get it to work with the Retro Pi, I suppose, into the Retro Pi, um, etc. Uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, but at any rate, um, and they offer also they sell like um, illuminated handles, uh, you know, so your ball lights up. But you're looking at another $36 for that. Um, so at any rate, it gets kind of pricey real quick uh, for those options. Um, I considered getting the servo stick um, and not going the software route. There's also an option you can you can cut the USB cables and they provide you instructions on how to um, hook that to a uh, either a toggle switch um, or two buttons. Uh, which is which sounds like it would be a little more manageable. So basically, you'd have it mounted here uh, on the panel, and then somewhere else, maybe down here, you add a little toggle switch. And when you switch it one way, it goes to four way. When you switch it the other way, it goes to eight way. Or you could have two separate buttons, uh, one for two way, one for four way, and and that would change it as well. Um, I considered it, but it would have been even more expensive. Uh, one. And two, it just sounded like a whole lot more work, honestly. Um, so what did I go with? I went with the Magstick Plus. So we see I have my DHL package here from International Shipping from the UK to here in um, sunny Florida where I live. And let's pull them out and see what we got. So these are my handles. And then these is the joysticks. So there they are. So I've already made one change. I already changed one of them to be a bat and one of them to be a ball. So I'm going to open them up so we can see them better. So that one there, I already took the ball top and put it on so you can see it. And then there's the ball, uh, the, the normal bat top one which still has protective covering on it. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to point out is I they really feel nice. Okay. Um, now, they provided me buy one, get one, but I was pretty fair, clear that I was going to be fair but honest. I wasn't looking to just rubber stamp them as awesome joysticks um, or say that they're wonderful even if I don't feel that they are. Um, but, um, that being said, um, my honest opinion is they feel solid. Okay, They feel heavy. They feel solid. They feel very well made. There's very thick plates. The plastic feels very nice the PVC, etc. 
Um, when you take the joystick out, you can see that they have white nylon on down there instead of PVC plastic for the internals. That's really important. Uh, quality joysticks have that. Um, so they feel really nice, okay? And they say that they're high quality switches. I'll have to take their word on it because I can't tell if they're cherry switches or just something else, but one way or another, they, they look to be nice. Um, and, uh, you know, they feel like they have a lot of metal and girth to them. Um, the um, bat top has a really thick handle to it, uh, which I thought, boy, that's a really thick shaft. It's really not. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If we pull out the one I took out. Pull it out here. And look at it. There's the one I took off. Um, it looks like a thick shaft, but it's really not. So it, it, it actually is, that's the thickness of the shaft, and it comes with this metallic plastic shaft cover, if you will, which makes the shaft look thicker than it really is. Sorry, I guess it makes it thicker, so to speak. But it's not, it itself is not metal. It's plastic with a um, nice chrome sheen to it. Um, but it feels really nice. It looks really nice. And it does make it look like it has a big thick shaft. So you could also take that off and not use it if you want, but then your ring here would have a little bit of a hole gap in it, as you can see, because it's kind of meant to fit around that um, cover. So uh, that is an option. You could do it with it or without it, but it really feels nice with it, honestly. So, um, and it comes with a matching dust cover, which is nice, kind of like the uh, Industrious Lorenzo. Uh, they are very comparable. Um, if I put them next to each other here. Uh, you can see they're very comparable with each other. Um, so um, the major difference is being that shaft. And Industrious Lorenzo sells um, the same sort of stick. It looks almost identical, quite honestly. Um, their mag stick um, has the same sort of switch mechanisms on the side. So there's the switch I was talking about before. Um, so switching it from 8-way to 4-way is a matter of switching this switch like that okay um, and the Nostra Lorenzo ones do that same thing but what makes the Magstick Pluses unique and better in my opinion is that you can do that same switch mechanism from the top so I'm gonna pause this for a second try to set up my uh, iPad to sit still for me while I try to switch it for you because uh, I need two hands to do it uh, since it's not mounted to the panel at this point. So I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so I think I've maneuvered this best I can. So um, here it is. I removed the protective plastic they had over the shaft. Um, so this is the one with the bat top on it. And again, I have the switch on the side here that switches it from 8-way to 4-way, just like that, which is pretty cool. But, um, and, and again, Industrious Lorenzo makes one that looks almost identical to this. Um, Paradise Arcade sells them. Um, and it has that switch on the side, and, uh, and it has the metal shaft, etc. Um, but what it doesn't have is the ability to do it from the top. So how do they manage that? Well, on the bottom here, this part here is where the magic happens. So, it's kind of hard to tell here, but... If you see this mechanism here, the way it works, when you twi uh, pull this out, so you kind of pull out, it catches, allowing you to to twist. Let's see if I can do it well I'm doing here. So the key is to pull, and it engages, and then rotate, and it pulls the switch. And then you let go. And now it's in the other play. And then to switch back, <coughs> you pull, and you rotate. Okay? So this mechanism up here is genius. Right? So basically it allows you to pull it, and from the bottom, you're um, pulling that switch across. Like that. Just like that. And then you let go of it. 
So that's awesome um, because you don't have to get underneath the cabinet to flick this switch here. Um, so that's really nice. So that's what I'm hoping to, to use. Um, I like the option that I can switch it from 8-way to 4-way from the top. I also like that I can switch this from a ball top to a bat top um, and vice versa. That does require getting inside the cabinet and undoing the bolt. So you have the single nut and uh, on the tip of the um, shaft that you unscrew that, drop in the new shaft, and then you're up and running with the opposite. Um, so that's nice. Um, the only complaint I would have on that is when you get the ball top, which they sell separately, um, so two complaints really. Uh, one would be that they don't offer you the option right away at sale, so if you know you want a ball top, you can't just get the ball top by itself. You have no choice but to order the stick with the bat top and then change it afterwards by adding on the $14 addition. Okay, so that's one one complaint I'd have going in. The other complaint I'd have going in is even after you buy this, you still can't change these balls for other balls. So uh, this does not screw off. It is, as far as I can tell, permanently on there. Um, and so is the dust cover that comes with it. So it's kind of caught between the metal part here of the shaft and the ball itself, so you're kind of stuck with their dust cover that they include with it. Uh, there's no option to change that for a different or a different color or a different type or whatever dust cover um, because it's stuck between the two. Uh, I, I don't think it would have taken much to add threads to the top of this thing. It probably has threads. Maybe it's just glued on. I don't know. Um, but they could have made it so you could have just unscrewed this ball and put on any ball you like. Um, is including um, like Paradise Arcade sells really nice uh, metal uh, bat tops you can put on top. Uh, they sell glow-in-the-dark ones, all kinds of stuff. Uh, if they had just made this a little bit more flexible, um, I think that would have been nice. But that being said, what it is is really nice. So it's a pretty nice, it's well, um, it feels really heavy, it's a metal. Um, the ball feels really nice, it looks really nice. Um, and it, it does make a nice joystick when it's all put together. And they do offer a few different colors. Um, so when you go to add it to your cart, here's where your color options are. So you have blue, I'm sorry, red, light blue, black, or light green. Um, those are your only options though. So if you wanted to get a turquoise or pink or something like that, it's impossible uh, without some modification anyway. Maybe you could get that off somehow. All right, so as I was saying, um, they are nice. What they send you is nice. Um, I just wish you had a little more flexibility uh, by being able to change the ball top to whatever ball you happen to want to buy for it. Um, maybe it's possible to get them off. I don't want to damage it. It feels like it's on there um, pretty well. Um, same thing with the dust washer. It's kind of trapped. So you can't change it if you don't like the look of it. Uh, if you want to change the color of it, you, you can't. Um, so that's where we are. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my XRK apart. Um, as always, that's not too difficult. Basically, you get underneath it, and you have these little feet, and inside of each foot, there's a little rubber piece that you pull out, which I've just gotten rid of altogether now because it's kind of a pain. I'm always going in and out. Um, and then you got a Phillips screw in each one, and you just pull the Phillips screw out. Um, the foot is supposed to stay on the wood, uh, and you just take the screw out. But I've found most of them have come right off with the screw uh, and a piece of the laminate as well, which kind of sucks. Um, so it is what it is. But you got eight screws. I'm going to go ahead and take those off. And once I have it open, I will turn the video back on. Be right back. All right, so uh, I got the back off. So again, Phillips screwdriver to get the eight screws out, and then a flathead screwdriver just to kind of pry out the back. Uh, you know, so you just get in and just kind of pop out the back. So we can see inside. Uh, mine looks a little different than the standard one, obviously, because you have the backs of the color buttons, and I've already changed the joysticks for different joysticks. Uh, the zippy sticks in this case. So um, my next step will be to disconnect all the wires. 
Again, I'll take good pitchers first. And, um, they just pull right off. Um, and then my next step after that will be to take these bolts off. So I'm going to do that and so, I'll be back. So um, with these joysticks, uh, because there's enough space, I'm able to get my ratchet on there, my socket wrench. And I can actually just use that to easily take them on and off. Uh, with the factory joysticks, that's just not an option because of this kind of square bottom it has. The um, the nuts go right up against it, so the only option to get these guys off, if this was still mounted inside there, is a pair of these. Uh, so it's a real pain because you kind of got to get in there and just kind of work at them a little by little. Um, so um, all the replacement sticks uh, are less bulky instead of a square base like the factory X Arcade ones have. Um, they all give you plenty of clearance because they have more of a round base to them. Um, plenty of clearance for um, you to put your bolts. Um, so um, I'm going to take those off, um, the four bolts off of each joystick. I've already taken the wires off of here. Getting those off isn't too hard either. Um, basically, you, um, and I've explained this in other videos, not, not rocket science here, but um, basically you want to pull back the rubber um, protection cover if you can, like that. kind of just pulls back. And then with your needle nose, you just kind of grab it. And they do stick on there pretty good, but you just kind of pull up and it comes off. So I'm going to do that for all the wires and I'm going to take the bolts off and then I'll be back. So I got the bolts off of this one. Um, there's also little lock washers in here. They're kind of hard to get just out. Um, and then you also have the issue of the whole thing doesn't want to really pull out real well. Um, so what you usually have to do, on the X-Arcade at least, is get like a screwdriver and put it on the tip of the bolt and then just kind of bang it down and it'll pop the bolt out the other side. So that's what I'm going to do uh, to get them out of there um, and then we'll reverse the process to put them back into the new joystick. So I'm going to do that now. Go, I banged them out and now nothing holds on to it. So I can just kind of pull it out. Um, now, I can't pull it out because it still has the ball top on it, so I, I can do one of two things. I could either remove this little uh, cotter pin here, which kind of pulls off the shaft, or I can unscrew the ball uh, so that it'll come through. I'm going to do the, uh, the latter. I'm going to take the ball off the other side so I can just pull the joystick out a uh, in one piece. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so I unscrewed it, and now I can just pull it out like that okay so this is what I was talking about with the other ones I really wish that the shaft came with like a, some threads so that you could just unscrew and put whatever ball top you want on it um, and, and maybe they do that and I just haven't figured that out but uh, it doesn't look like it if you look at it it doesn't have that sort of flat look to it Show it to you with oh, the dust, wa dust washer falling, but see it, it it really doesn't have the look like it comes off like this did. So at any rate, I'm gonna uh, work on the next one. Uh, so I have it out as you can see, um, and then we'll work on the install. All right, be back in a bit. Bolt this one. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the shaft, um, or not the shaft, but the uh, ball off the shaft. Um, it, it's possible to do it after it's unbolted, it's just a little bit more wobbly. Um, so the way you do it is you stick your straight edge screwdriver into the shaft base here, and then from the top of the case, um, you unscrew the ball. So this is to hold the shaft still while you rotate, um, and, uh, and that makes it a, a breeze. Um, you could also use a pair of pliers on the shaft on the top and hold it while you unscrew. But uh, I hesitate against it because even with paper towels or cloth or something to protect the shaft, you can still scratch or bend your shaft, especially since most of the shafts are hollow. 
So I recommend this method here. You put the screwdriver in the bottom and then you unscrew the top. So I'm going to do that now. Alright, so I got that one out. No problem. I didn't even have to pop the bolts out. Um, and this one you can see is the one with the plate on it. Uh, I am going to have to pop the bolts off in order to get the plate off. So I'm going to work on that now. Again, not a difficult process. Basically put the tip of your screwdriver on the end of the bolt and then use your other hand to just kind of push down or bang down on it real quick and it, it pops out. So I try to do it. I just don't have quite enough leverage with one hand. I got to kind of pop it. So I have to put the camera down to do that. I'll be right back. So just like that, my XRK now has no joysticks. Um, so um, I've tried to show it in previous videos, but as you can see here, um, the, jo the X Arcade, blurry, I apologize. Uh, the X Arcade has kind of squared out holes for you to put your bolts in, uh, and that's what holds them still while you uh, crank down the um, screws on the other side, okay, or the uh, nuts. So you can see it real well on these ones, okay. So, all right, so my next step will be to mount these guys, right? So the problem here is, um, just like a zippy stick or a Sanwa or a Shimitsu, these come with a long uh, mounting plate. Um, and if I flip my X Arcade back over, it becomes rapidly clear that those don't match. So it's too tall and too thin, you ain't going to be able to put that on. So what does that mean? Well, it means the same thing I had to do for my zippies, which came with that same sort of plate, I'm going to have to do with these, which is put on a universal mounting plate, uh, which is about another 7 bucks each um, from Paradise Arcade. They sell various different ones. I got the IL mounting sticks. Uh, they also sell a universal, they call mounting plate which is even more holes uh, which probably if I had to do it over again I'd probably buy that one just because it gives more versatility but this one does the trick the IL mounting plate um, so I'll be taking these off of my zippy sticks and putting them onto my mag stick pluses so uh, it's basically just these four screws here come out that drops the plate off same thing four screws here drop that plate off and then uh, I can change it out so I'm gonna uh, get out the old zippy plate ones to put back onto the zippies and put them back how they were when I bought them and uh, that'll free up these restrictor or uh, mounting plates to put onto my new magstick pluses so I'm gonna get those out and I'll come back in a minute these are the plates that came with my zippy sticks um, they're very similar uh, to the ones that come with these they're slightly just slightly wider and slightly, just slightly taller as well. Um, but about the same idea. Um, they're not quite as nice a metal. These ones are like a nice polished chrome. Very pretty. Of course, you'll never see it underneath your cabinet. Um, but uh, yeah, so these are gonna. I'm gonna take these off, um, and I'll put the zippy stick ones that came with it back on the zippies, and. Then I'll have those restrictor or these uh, mounting plates, the universal plates, to put back on here, which should make mounting the new sticks to my cabinet a whole lot easier. So I'm going to work on taking off these four screws. I'll also have to take off the shafts here to do that. It's just this single bolt on the back. And there's also, be careful if you're doing this, uh, there is a spring in here and another. Sorry, it gets real blurry on me here. There we go. Um, so there's a spring in there and this little bottom pot piece that helps maneuver everything. Uh, so when you take this bolt off, it all kind of kind of pops out. So be careful not to lose anything if you're going to do this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off now uh, so that I can change the restrictor plates and so I can mount it onto my um, X Arcade as well. So I'm going to work on that and I'll be right back. So as you can see, I've taken um, the universal plate off. And now I can put their plate back on. That's what they came with. Again, just four screws. Doesn't take much. All right. And then uh, these will be back to how they were purchased. Okay. I'm gonna work on that now. 
got my zippy stick back together. I put the ball back on. I can put this in a drawer someplace in case I ever want to put them back on. I, I, I gotta say, I really like these sticks. I think they were very good. Uh, I liked the gameplay. I liked the look, the feel. Um, they actually have a really nice stick here for about eight ninety five. dollars um, The only thing I didn't like was that I had to go underneath it. I had to open up my cabinet. I had to remove these screws and move this plate to two-way, four-way, or eight-way. Uh, other than that, all around great sticks. I had no complaints about them. Um, and uh, they're very similar, again, to the Shimitsu or Sanwa sticks. So I would imagine you'd be just as happy with those, if not happier, since they're the name brand, um, so to speak. So uh, at any rate, uh, next step, now that I've gotten that one back together, let's do the same thing for the other one. And then I can start disassembling this guy so that I can put my uh, mounting plates, my universal mounting plates, onto them. So I'm going to work on that. Um, the first part, which is putting back together the other zippy and getting the other uh, mounting plate off. And then I will start disassembling this uh, with you guys. All right, be right back. All right. So um, my next step will be to um, try to take apart my new Magstick Plus, uh, which will be to take this bolt off here um, so that I can pull the shaft out, so that I can take the restrictor plate off, or the mounting plate off, and so that I can put it into my cabinet, uh, or X-Arcade in this case. Um, before I go into that though, I kind of wanted to point something out here. Um, if I compare the weight and feel of the original X-Arcade sticks, to the industrious Lorenza stick, boy, there's a night and day difference. Um, I mean, this feels light and like feather, like really light. And then this feels much more sturdy, uh, much more solid. Um, you can kind of see it in the construction of the things. The the um, the X Arcade um, switches and. Uh, the cherry switches in the back of the Duster Lorenzo, they just look sharper, better, um, they feel better when you actually use them. Um, so, so right away you can see the quality difference between the factory X Arcade and the Industrious Lorenzo. And, um, and then you go to the cheap old Jippy sticks, the Zippy sticks, and believe it or not they're heavy as well and they're mostly made out of metal. Um, they're really well made for an eight nine dollar thing, um, and uh, I really like them. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that I have to get underneath to change them, um, but then when you get to the Magstick Plus, boy, the feel of this one, even compared to the Industrious Lorenzo one, um, it's just this thing's heavy. This thing's well built. Um, I, I gotta say, it really feels like you know you're dealing with something professional. Um, and uh, and I really like that. Um, again, it, it feels like it's it's got to be um, between the X Arcade and this one. It's got to be two three times the the weight, um, and it's also considerably heavier than the Industrious Lorenzo one as well. So um, uh, you can tell the design is very similar to the Industrious Lorenzo. You know, you got that same sort of metal, or I mean, a rounded um, components there in the bottom. Um, but uh, this is a little bit more tightly packed, as you can see. It has the cherry switches and stuff really tight together. Um, and it's just really heavy, and um, you can feel that it's uh, really well made. So, I like that. Um, so, my next step um, is going to be, um, conveniently, it's the same size bolt as what goes into the cabinet to bolt the thing down here in the corners uh, you use here. So uh, I'm going to stick that on there, I'm going to hold the ball and I'm just going to start cranking it loose. Now like I warned you guys before, a bunch of stuff comes out when you unbolt this so do be careful. Okay, Because that's on a spring, you see that? So you end up with all of that. Okay, so you don't want to lose any of those pieces. Uh, make sure you save them. 
Okay. That's a lot of pieces to lose. Um, so once you've done that, though, the shaft just pulls out. Now, this is what I was talking about before. See inside there? That's white um, instead of black, and uh, that that it's nylon. That's why, and that nylon wears a whole lot nicer and just feels a whole lot better um, when you're using the sticks than um, the black PVC you see in the cheaper sticks. So um, that's really nice to see that. You can tell they uh, made quality stuff here. Um, you can see it again from the bottom, kind of between the leaf switches there. Um, and uh, that brings us to the next thing. These are leaf switches, which um, add a little bit of a metal bar on top of the physical switch that's getting depressed. Um, you know, I've seen those on other sticks and kind of felt, eh. uh, in fact, they were on the originals here, but I, I want you to see the difference, okay? Um, my complaint with these ones is, you see how long and thin they are? Um, they get bent out of the way, or they get bent over time as you're using them, and they just feel really chintzy. Um, so I know that over time, those are little by little going to get worn, and, and you're going to lose some of your control. Um, these are much shorter. They're also thicker, uh, and, and you can't get in there and touch them, so I can't really feel the flexibility of them, but... Um, I, I just have the the inclination to think that they're 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 better made um, and that they won't have those same pitfalls. Um, so at any rate, um, there it is with no um, shaft on it. My next step will be to take the four screws out so that I can change the mounting plate. So I'll do that and just fill up screwdriver. Nothing too fancy. All right, don't lose your screws. And then the last one. Now, I hate to get rid of this mounting plate because it really is nice. It's a very heavy metal. It's pretty. It's chrome. But again, it goes underneath, so it doesn't really matter. Very nice mounting plate, though. And then inside, again, like I mentioned before, you can see all that nice nylon. All right, so then I get my universal plate from um, Paradise Arcade and, and hope that everything lines up okay I think it does so I'm going to stick my screws in and start mounting it a little bit of a oh boy am I in trouble here moment um, so my zippy sticks went into these holes here these kind of ones with the indentations um, and boy they don't line up <laughs> but the good news is there's these inside ones, these kind of smaller screws, and it looks like those do line up. So I should be okay. So I'm going uh, to line it up to those and mount it on there, and I should be okay. The screw heads will stick out slightly, but it shouldn't impact anything. I don't believe. All right, so I'm going to just stick one in at a time. Uh, can't crank them all the way down because then it kind of bows out the um, plate. So I'm just not going to put them in all the way yet. <clears throat> it's a snug fit, I'll say that. It's not a perfect match. Um, this is where the Universal, the actual universal plate might have been even better, but uh, I think this will do the trick. Just kind of loosen them a little bit again because I don't want it to pop away. See, it kind of pops them away a bit, so I gotta make sure I don't tighten any one of them too much so that I can put them on evenly.
yeah, and it's not a perfect fit as far as placement of the screws on this particular um, plate. Um, I might have to loosen these further in order to get them all more even. I don't really like putting them in at an angle. So I'm going to pause it for a second so I can look at it better. Alright, so I got it on. Um, I will say that it's a tight, that the screws don't line up perfectly. On the zippies they did because uh, they went into these outer screws hole, holes and they, and they fit there perfect. Um, these inner ones do work, um, but uh, I had to do all four screws at the same time, basically, little by little, one here, one there. Um, and they went in at slight an angle, um, which didn't affect anything, um, but, and you can see that the screw heads stick out just slightly as well. Um, I probably could have gotten a drill and drilled out the holes a little bit. Uh, that might have made it a little better. Uh, but they do fit, and I didn't want to do that if I didn't have to. Um, the other universal plate that Paradise Arcade sells that's actually got, you know, like twice the amount of holes um, might have had a set of holes that worked even better. Um, but again, it worked. It just was, I would have liked the holes to have been a little bit more lined up than they were. Um, but the, they did get on there in the end. So um, now it should be fairly a breeze to um, put this onto my X Arcade. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of space out where it's going here. Um, so basically, I'm going to take it. And I want to make sure there's room for that switch to move. Because it still gets moved, even though you don't have to manually move it. It looks like there's plenty of clearance there. But you can see with the restrictor plate, it fits in really nice, or the, the mounting plate, I should say. Fits in perfectly. Um, now I can just add the bolts back through the holes in the corners, um, you know, and, and then uh, add back the nuts, and then I'll start putting on wires and stuff uh, and pulling the shaft back through. Uh, so I'm going to work on the nuts and bolts, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've pulled through the four bolts in the corners and added a lock washer onto each. Uh, the next step will be to add back the nuts, like so. And again, I'll use my socket set to do that quickly. That should do it. Now, before you crank them down too much, make sure that your square end on the other side of the panel is in properly all the way, because you don't want to pull it through and make a new square end, because um, that would be damaging your cabinet. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to feel them on the other side of it, make sure it's in there flush before I crank this thing down. So I'll come back after i got all four bolts on. So I got them all partially on. Uh, I would liken this to putting on a tire on a car. Um, you don't want to crank down one bolt first and then go to the next one. You want to do this one most of the way, then this one most of the way, then this one most of the way, then this one most of the way, and then continue to tighten all the way around. That way you make sure that they're it's evenly mounted. Um, otherwise you might have a situation where it pulls down one corner and then the other ones are kind of bent up. So uh, I liken again to a, a car tire uh, put on the bolts crisscross actually is best here to there and then there to there etc uh, just like you would on a car so I'm gonna continue to tighten them down and then we'll work on the other one and uh, we'll get them put back together alright so that was the way they were wired originally on the original X Arcade um, micro switches and uh, one thing I noticed right off the bat is they're opposite of how these ones are pointed. Um, so you see the one that comes out on the out on the top here. Um, it's pointed this way, and this one is the other way. It's coming out this side. So the the, the way they're designed is the same, but um, uh, it looks like you skip. Um, if we're looking real close here, um, you skip the. Um, the wire 
that's on the outside. So, you know, the X arcade switches only have two leads. So there would be another switch, uh, another lead here on these ones, right? Um, so I, I'm just going to ignore this one here and use that one and that one. And I'm going to assume that the outside one is the same as the outside one here. So they won't go on in the exact same order here because they're backwards um, but where there was an outside one I'm gonna put an outside one and where there's inside one I'll put an inside one etc um, so we'll go from there so that's what I'm gonna work on now uh, I'm trying to mimic that as much as possible um, but reversing the wire so where I have yellow here I'll put yellow here and then brown here I'm going to put brown here, etc. So I'll work on that. I'll show you when it's all done. So I think I got it. So again, yellow on the outside here, brown. So we have yellow on the outside here, and brown, and then we we'll skip the extra lead. And then over here, I have red on the outside, and then brown on the inside. So here I have red on the outside, brown on the inside, skip the extra lead. Here we have brown on the outside, I'm sorry, uh, green on the outside, brown on the inside. So we have here green on the outside, brown on the inside, skip the extra lead. And then here we have orange on the outside, brown on the inside, no extra lead. So we have orange on the outside, brown on the inside, skip the extra lead. So I think that one's ready to roll. So I still have a hole on this side, so I'm going to work on mounting the joystick, and then I'll work on the wires for this one, which are a little different. Okay, something I want to mention, um, these might look like they're square, these plates, but they're not. Um, they're still rectangular. They're just not as rectangular as the ones that come with it. Um, so why is that important? Well, depending, uh, this is a square, the, the, the screw pattern is a square. Um, so depending whether you put the rectangular going this way or this way is going to dictate which way your switch ends up. So you want to make sure that your rectangle is an up-down rectangle to the switch so that when it goes in, you can have it off on the side, much like that one. Um, or it could be in the top or the bottom, whatever, but you want to make sure that both your joysticks are the same I would assume so that your controls will be the same when you're uh, changing them from one way to the other instead of backwards or something. Um, so, you know, when I first put the mounting plate on, it would have had my switch down at the bottom on this one as opposed to the right on that one. And maybe it wouldn't have mattered, I don't know, but uh, I want to have them the same. So um, be careful when you're putting these things on um, if you're doing this um, to, to get your um, right directional on the uh, rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to finish putting these on. Again, they, they aren't a perfect fit. Uh, as you can see, I have to put them in at a bit of an angle. Um, so again, I liken it to a car tire. Um, you do a little bit on each uh, at a time so that you can get them in there as straight as you can as opposed to one being at a crazy angle uh, and the others being nice and flush. So uh, a little bit on each, so I'll go here and then there 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 until they're all in flush um, as best as they can. So it, they do work, uh, they're just not perfectly lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them on and then I'll come back. Okay, I'll show that they do it here. So again, they're not a perfect fit, so I'm just going to couple turns here, and then I'll give this one a couple turns here, and then I'll give this one a couple turns here, that one a couple turns there, and then again they do fit, they're just all of them are going in at a slight little angle, but not enough that it's concerning.
they don't have to be crazy tight just enough so that you're not getting any jiggling there we go it's on so you can see the heads are a little bit at an angle as well um, but again you're not going to notice that when it's flush against the cabinet so mounting plates on I'm ready to roll so I'm going to go ahead and put this one in now okay so just like the other side I got this one in um, again I put one I put all four bolts by hand first um, the screws uh, are coming through and then uh, putting the nut on the end uh, just hand tight and then uh, with my socket wrench I socketed them in but um, again kinda like a tire I did here then here then here then there then there then there etc until they were all evenly tightened again being careful on the other side of the panel that the square end of the uh, bolt went into the square um, corners of the cabinet uh, which will hold the bolts still while you're cranking on these um, nuts um, they don't need to be cranked on too tight um, you don't want to start pulling the head of the, the bolt into the cabinet at all they don't need to be on super tight unlike a tire you don't have to worry about these coming off at 70 miles an hour on the expressway um, so just just enough to tighten them onto the cabinet um, not enough to pull the head of the screw into the wood so um, this one's ready to get wires on it I'm gonna work on it again um, I'll be working with this lead and this lead the extra lead will not get used on any of these switches um, that is not something we need so uh, I'll work on that uh, again it'll make it match this opposite again using the same idea there the, the X arcade switches only had the outside and the single lead there they didn't have the extra lead um, so I'm gonna work that same method again paying attention to put um, this color on the outside lead, this on the inside lead, this color on the outside lead, that on the inside lead, etc. Uh, all the way around. So uh, I'll get that put together and um, I'll show you when it's done. Alright, so there it is wired up. So again, I've tried to match. This is the original X Arcade switches. I went brown on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. So we have brown on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. And over here we have white on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. White on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. And over here we have red on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. Red on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. And last but not least, we have gray on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. Gray on the outside, purple on the inside, no extra lead. So that's it. That's as mimicking it as, as close as I can. I will test it afterwards to make sure that it actually does what I think it should. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. So uh, the next step will be to bring the shaft through. I'm going to pull in the bat tops initially, um, try it out, and then I'll change them out for the ball tops and see which one I like better. Okay, so um, I wish I had paid more attention when I took these apart exactly what order everything went in, but I think I got the gist of how they go back together. I, I took them both apart unfortunately, so I don't have one to look at. Um, but basically this is going to come through the back of their uh, X Arcade or your panel if you're in a cabinet. It's kind of a tight fit, okay. And then once it's through, you got this this rectangular plate and that goes on like that, okay. About that. That goes on there, and then we put this on here. Kind of pull it all together, and then this is the tricky part: holding that while you put on the washer. And the bolt. And it does have a flat end and a non flat. The flat should go towards the joystick. And then once you got on a little bit, it's not so bad. Now you can just kind of screw the joystick apart into there. 
And then you get your socket wrench. You could do it with pliers too, but I'd hesitate against it. It doesn't have to be too tight, just enough. And let's see if it works. So um, we can see our switch here in the side here. Uh, I should be able to rotate it from the top. See that? So I can use my joystick that way. Right now it's in eight way, which means I can hit the angle. See, I'm hitting two switches at once, right? But if I pull out, move that lever up, now I can either hit that one or that one, but I really can't hit both. It won't let me, right? So I can hit that one or that one, but I can't hit both at the same time. It won't let me hit both. So that's my four way. Um, so that's it. So pull out, pull down. Now it's an eight way. I can hit all the corners, pull out, rotate, let back in, and I can't. So pretty genius design, honestly. Um, let's look at it from the top. Looks really sharp, all right? And again, changing it is as simple as lift. Figuring out which way to twist it is the trick. You can't see it, so there you go. So uh, let's lift, and rotate down, and now I'm in. Lift, rotate up, and now I'm in. So that's it. So that's uh, uh, the four-way, eight-way. Um, and now I'm going to do the same thing for this one, and we'll put in a ball top just so we can see the difference. Uh, so again, this one comes with the washer. It's going to go through the shaft like that. So you see how it looks on top different? It's a, a preference thing. Which one do you like better, basically? I kind of like the ball top look and feel. Um, but this looks like really nice, too. And I like the thick shaft. I like the red um, dust washer. Uh, matches it real pretty. Kind of looks a lot like the Dustress Lorenzo, only better because of the chrome uh, and thick. Uh, shaft. Um, so, okay, so now I'm going to flip it back around here and we're going to do the same process for this one. Okay, so uh, next I'm going to put this ball top one. Again, the ball does not unscrew as far as I can tell and the dust cover is trapped between the two so you can't change the dust cover. Kind of a disadvantage in my opinion, but it's still a nice setup all around. Um, so I'm going to Push that through like that, and then I'm going to kind of place it against this thing here to just give me a little bit of grip on it. And then I'm going to put on the rectangular piece and then my spring. And now comes the tricky part putting this guy over the spring, depressing it over the nut holding it in place long enough to get on the lock washer and the nut again the flat part down onto the threads that spring really wants to push me off so I got my bolt on just in time now I can reach from behind Continue to screw it on by hand as much as possible before getting on my ratchet. Finish the job. And there we go. So let's see how it works. So again, I can pull it. There we go. I gotta get it into place. But I can pull out, and I can see the lever move. Let go, and now it's in four way. See, I can't really quite hit two at once. I can hit left, I can hit up, down, right, left. But I cannot hit those corners. If I want to put it in eight way, I pull out, I rotate down, let go, and now I'm able to hit the corners just fine. So that's that's what it looks like from the bottom. From the top, same sort of thing. I can pull. Can hear the lever pull, drop it down, and now 
Yeah, and now it's just a preference as to do you like the ball top or do you like the bat top? And uh, the only as simple is just no, I'm not rotate, sure. pull and rotate to switch from eight way to four way play. I love it. I haven't actually tried it yet, obviously. Uh, I'll do that in a minute and I'll video that a little bit as well, just to give you a little bit of an opinion on which one I like better um, the ball or the bat. And uh, but from a from a looks perspective, I personally like the ball look, but maybe your gameplay style likes the bat better. Um, it's really a preference, honestly. Uh, I like the ability to change at any point. Um, it does take a little bit. I got to do that same process where I undo that bolt and the spring and all that come apart, reslide in the other one, and then I'm up and running. Um, but um, I think I'm probably going to put the balls on both of them. Uh, but I'm going to try a couple games real quick, see which one I feel like um, acts better, and, uh, and I'll let you know that opinion as well. So, uh, be back in a bit. Alright, one thing I noticed um, right off the bat after I closed up the unit, I noticed that sometimes when I did it and tried to switch, it just would keep spinning. And I didn't, I couldn't really tell if I'm... You know, if I've completely moved that lever or not, uh, am I in eight way or four way for that matter? Um, and I think the reason why is because this thing has got to be on there really nice and tight. So if you don't have that screw on or that bolt on the, um, the nut on the bolt really well on the shaft, um, this part here, I don't know if you can see it, needs to be able to go into that little plastic PVC piece there. Um, so that when you pull it, that's what gives it its traction to be able to rotate that lever up or down one way or another. So if you don't have the bolt on real tight, you're not going to be able to move the lever like I just did there. All right? Same thing when you go down. Nah, you got to be able to really grab it. So make sure you tighten this on really good so that it's not continuously spinning. If you're able to keep spinning your joystick beyond the throw of it, either you're rotating it past it like that and you're missing it or something. So make sure you got that on there just right so that when you pull, you're able to move your lever. Okay? Um, that's it. Alright, so once they're installed properly and you got them tightened down good, um, it's clockwise for four-way play, counterclockwise if you want to switch it to eight-way. So right now I can move it counter or clockwise, so that means I just put it into four-way play. So now I can just go up, down, left, right. If I move the angles, I'm either going to hit left or up. I really can't get left up or left right, um, etc. I'm sorry, or uh, up right or down right or down left. Um, but then if I go counterclockwise, so now I lift it up and I rotate it counterclockwise just until it moves. Don't force it because you'll damage that bushing on the other side. Um, now it should be, I can hit everything. So now it's eight way. So counterclockwise to get it into eight way mode, clockwise to get it into four way mode. Don't try to twist it past. Um, the whole way. So normally when it's just in place you can kind of just move it just a little bit, right? If you're lifting and then going counter, or, I'm sorry, clockwise to switch it back to four way, when it stops, it stops and let it go. Don't try to keep rotating it or it'll damage it. So now I'm in four way again and to switch back I lift, go counterclockwise let go and now I'm back in eight way. Okay, same thing over here. All right, lift clockwise to get it to four play. So now it's in four way mode. If I want to switch back to eight way mode, lift up. Sorry, it's hard with one hand without holding the X arcade. And then let it down. But it's really not hard if you have two hands. You just hold one down, lift up, turn, etc. So that's it. So that's eight way. So clock, uh, clockwise to turn it into eight, four way, counterclockwise to turn it into 
eight way and uh, don't try to rotate it past those um, or you could bend these little prongy thingies here on the PVC if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in. Focus a little better for you. Okay, see where the metal goes into the PVC there. Or maybe you can see it better on this one. Where the metal goes into the PVC there, you don't want to bend that. Right, so just try to make sure you're not forcing it. Okay, and that's it. All right, so I got uh, my retro pry pry hooked up, and uh, I got my X arcade plugged in, and so far I got no love. So I don't know if I messed something up or what the deal is. But I'm not getting any movement of any kind from my um, console. So let me go check it out. All right. So good news, bad news. Um, it works. I have it wired wrong, apparently. So um, my buttons work. So when I hit player one, it does bring up like the main menu. But in order to actually switch between stuff, I'm having to go left and right instead of up and down on both joysticks. So apparently I'm going to have to rotate my wires a bit because I obviously have the ups and downs and left and rights uh, off. Um, so that was the problem with um, the way the um, wiring was on the other ones that the, um, on the X-Arcade, the switches were pointed up and down. I thought I would just do it, but I'm guessing that these have to go here and these have to go there, etc. All the way around. So I'm going to work on that on one of them, try it, and then if I'm right, I will um, do the same to the other. So I'll be right back. I'm going to rotate these around and go from there. Okay, so what I've done is I took the wires that were here and I moved them there and the ones that were there down to here, etc., all the way around in a clockwise manner. And I'll try that and see if it worked. If it didn't, then it'll be opposite. <laughs> I'll have to go counterclockwise all the way around and I'll have to go twice around at this point because I've already went once the other way. So let's see if it works. I put it down, I plugged it back in. Um, and I did unplug it during this, just to be safe. I don't want to short something out. Um, but uh, let's see, moment of truth. Aha, so down is now down. Up is now up. That is good news. I don't know about left or right yet. I'll know that once I actually start playing games. Um, but first I need to fix my other joystick because it's still left right. I don't want left or right, I want up down. So uh, give me a minute, I'll change those wires and then we'll go from there. All right, and again, I've rotated all the wires. The ones that were here, I put there and vice versa all the way around. Um, moment of truth on this one. Flip it over. I already replugged it back in. I did unplug it while I changed the wires. And let's see what we got. I got nothing. Uh, oh, I don't have my, my light didn't come on, so that means it didn't get the USB signal yet. Go my retro Pi. Sometimes you just gotta play with these things. Oh, that light tells you you got good signal. Again, this one works. Let's try this one. The new one. The ball top works now as well. So we're ready to start using this thing, see if we actually like it. So I'm going to my XRK or into uh, MAME, which would be my favorite of the consoles, so to speak. And find my favorite games and start playing. So I will work on that and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so as we can see, I can go through, everything's working. I'm on the ball top one at the moment. Everything seems to work really nicely. 
So let me get over to a game I really want to play. Let's try Donkey Kong, shall we? That's the one I want to try. Let's see how that works. Give myself some credits. Hit player one. Not great performance on my part, but the joystick is not at fault here. So currently I'm on the 8-way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the lift. I'm going to rotate it down. Now I'm on 4-way. We'll see if I like that performance better. Yeah, it kind of locks in place on one axis. Again, I'm not really paying enough attention to the game to do well, but uh, let's try again. Another good game to try it on will be Pac-Man. That's definitely a four-way four game. Let's see if we like how that looks or feels. So, if I was playing with a 8-way stick right now, I'd be having all kinds of issues when I'd accidentally hit two switches at the same time, it would get confused as to where to go. So I'm going to switch over to a Pac-Man type game, maybe Miss Pac-Man, something like that, and see if we still like the performance there. So get out of here. Jump over to M for misses. Scroll down to misses. Miss. Give myself some coins. Beautiful. Nobody said I was good, guys. Here we go. So it goes around those corners really nicely because I don't have to worry about hidden angles. So far I'm liking it. What's nice is it doesn't feel restricted. So like when you use the uh, actual physical plates to restrict, you can actually feel like it's not letting you into the corners and you know it kind of feels boxy. That's not the case with these because it actually does let you move towards the corners, it just doesn't hit the switch. Which is, I think, more like what it was like at the arcade, if I recall correctly. Um, so, so far, I'm liking it. So far, I'm liking it a lot. Um, and then when I want to go to an eight-player game, or eight-way game, I should say, like Street Fighter. So, if I do that, if I jump over to S's. Street Fighter. It 
definitely want eight-way play for Street Fighter, so I'm gonna lift up and rotate my thing so that I'm able to hit my corners again. All right, and let's give it a try. So I'm able to jump forward, I'm able to jump backwards, so my angles are working. Of course I get my butt kicked, never been really good at Street Fighter, but I get the idea. Yeah, so works great for eight way. Works great with four way. Um, so um, the one complaint I've seen about these joysticks um, is the the throw, as they call it. Um, in other words, to move this joystick is very short throw, if you will, in one direction or another. The, the, you can see the actual joystick doesn't move all that much. And that said, regardless of which of the two um, you use, ball top or bat top. Um, and I, I, I don't disagree. Let me get the other sticks and I'll show you the difference. All right, so I brought them all just so we can kind of look. Um, so when I move this one, you can see how much it moves, right? When I move the factory one, it is significantly more of a movement. Same thing with the IL. Right, moves quite a bit in one in whatever direction you're you're rotating it, and then uh, with the zippies you can really see it. See how much it moves. Um, where when you do these, you have very little movement. Right now that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It depends on your style of play. I, I kind of like it honestly. It, it, you don't have to do much, just kind of move it one direction, it goes. Um, so it, it's a preference thing, I think, but it definitely does have a very short throw, regardless of which of the two shafts you use, and I don't know that either shaft makes it better or worse, per se. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is the color. Um, the color of the, the two different balls, the IL and the um, Ultramark, um, stick are pretty much identical, same red, uh, with the difference being um, the red shaft as opposed to the chrome shaft. I, I really like the chrome, honestly, it looks nicer. Um, but there is a difference in the red between the zippy stick red, which I actually had bought in a Sanwa ball for, um, Sanwa brand ball for from Paradise Arcade. Uh, and the ball on the one that comes with the stick um, when you order that $14 stick. It is a different color red. I don't know if you can quite tell in the video. Um, but uh, this is more of an, uh, I don't know, a lighter red. Uh, and then this is more of a bright cherry red. It's really nice. I, I really like the, the red color on there matches the red button really well. Okay. Or this one is just slightly different. It's almost an orangish red. It's a little harder to tell. 
in the video, but trust me on this, it's a slightly less red, <laughs> if you will, than the red here. It's a really nice um, cherry red, uh, which is more reminiscent of what I recall um, the arcades having. Um, so that's it. You can see the difference of the look. I, I really think I like the, the ball top, so I think I'll probably change this one over to be a ball top. I wanted to give it a shot um, both direction or both ways. Um, of the joysticks I've installed, I would say these are the best. Um, I'm not saying that because they gave me a buy one, get one. Uh, I appreciate them having done that, but I was going to tell you one way or another how I felt about them. Um, I think they're really well built sticks. Uh, that's my honest opinion. Um, I also think they're um, very nice. Um, what are the downsides? Um, well, from a gameplay standpoint, the only downside would be that short throw if you don't like the short throw. Um, otherwise, you know, the ability to change from eight way to four way from the top of the cabinet, just as simple as lift, twist, is phenomenal. You can't, can't go wrong there. Um, and again, it works the same way regardless of whether or not you choose the bat top or the ball top. Um, what are the other um, disadvantages? I, I can't think of one except for price. Um, these things are pricey. Uh, they're considerably more expensive than um, even the most expensive Japanese sticks. So, um, you know, most Japanese, the Sanwa Shimitsus cost about 25 bucks a piece. Uh, these you're looking at like 39 plus if you want to add it to be a ball top it's another 14 plus it was about $16 shipping just for one joystick from the UK to the US I don't know what it would be if I was in the UK um, and I don't know where you are per se but um, you know it makes a you know 60 61 dollars I think for this setup for one joystick with one ball top um, and that's kind of pricey so that would be the disadvantage, I, I would say, of these sticks um, more than anything else. Um, if you can afford them, um, I think they're wonderful. Um, from what I could tell, they're very nice, uh, very nicely made. Uh, the gameplay seems really nice. Um, you know, you can feel it. They're not too loud. They're about the same noise factor, I would say, as the uh, other ones. Um, and, uh, you know, you can kind of rotate through it, it feels smooth feels solid um, gives you that genuine arcade feel to it um, and uh, overall I think they're going to make great sticks so um, the only other option that uh, might work even better would be the uh, Ultramark uh, servo sticks which have the motor uh, again you would have to wire up some sort of a switch either a toggle uh, or two buttons, one for four-way, one for eight-way play. Um, you would end up having to have another USB plug, though. Um, you also have to mount a control board inside. Um, sounds like a lot more work to me. Um, could it be done? Yeah. Is it worth doing? I don't know. These seem to work just fine as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if they, if they want to send me the other ones, I'd be more than happy to review them, try them, and do it. Um, but... Uh, I don't think I'm going to need to spend any more money to do it myself because uh, I, I kind of like this setup just fine. Um, so um, overall, I'd say this is a win. Um, very good joysticks, uh, very good quality. Um, one other thing I would recommend the manufacturer do is, again, make it so that you can unscrew the ball top and put on any ball you want. I think that would be nice. Um, you know, sell the shaft with the ball, uh, and you, maybe you can even choose the ball. Another thing they could do to make them even nicer is those mounting plates. So they could sell the joystick uh, with different mounting plate options so that, you know, depending what kind of a case you have, you could get the right mounting plate or at least sell, sell the mounting plates themselves, um, the various different sizes for different arcade setups. Um, uh, but uh, for now, you can go through Paradise Arcade and get the mounting plates. Uh, necessary to mount your Ultramark um, Bag Stick Plus uh, sticks onto your X Arcade or whatever arcade box you might have. Um, am I planning on doing any more mods? Well, you've probably heard me say it before. No, I think I'm done at this point. I've done everything I wanted to do. I got joysticks that work for 8-way and 4-way play. I got... Um, uh, my colored buttons. I got 
my nice spinner, my turbo, um, turbo spinner. Um, and then I also have um, uh, the joysticks that I want. So one way or another, I think I'm done. Um, does that mean I am done? I don't know. Maybe not. Depends. But probably I'm done. And I hope you've enjoyed my videos of all the little mods I've done to my X-Arcade. And um, if you do, uh, like, subscribe, whatever. Um, make comments. I'll try to respond to them. If you have any questions, I'll try to respond to those as well. I'm usually pretty good about it. Um, but uh, good luck with your projects. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Bye.